here is your lecture video for lesson 116. It's um, on region of interest. So when we're graphing, we just learned a few things about Lee. Um, and so some tools in graphing, you know, sometimes you don't want to be graphing blindly. Like you don't want to pick really big values that aren't um, going to really help you with your graph. So there's a way that we can find out where most of the graph is or where the interesting parts of the graph are. The interesting parts of the graph would be maybe where they, um, where the graph has a y-intercept or maybe where it has an x-intercept, where there's some turning points on the graph. Um, let me show you an uninteresting part of a graph. An uninteresting part of a graph might be way, way up here because it's not doing anything. It's just going straight up. Okay, so the interesting parts of the graph would be kind of right in the, I guess you can call it the middle of the graph, right? It would be the places where it crosses the y-axis, where it, where the intercepts, where are the turning points. Okay, so there's a way to, so we if we're plugging points into something, we don't want to be plugging points in where there's nothing good happening, you know, because those aren't going to get us any insight into the graph. So. This way to find the region of interest, you can read all this. Um, you want to normalize your polynomial equation, or in other words, to normalize it means you want the the highest degree term to have a coefficient of one. So it needs to be um, normalized. And then all you have to do, so it says in the bold, it says we, we select the normalized polynomial equation. Um, the constant of the greatest absolute value. So we're going to look at the coefficient, the, the biggest absolute value coefficient, and we're going to add one to it. And that's going to be the radius of a circle um, whose center is at the origin. Um, inside that circle, all the interesting parts of the graph are going to be like the flex points. It says all this, um, all the roots and everything. Okay, so they show you how to how to normalize something. So what all they did right here is they just divided out the. Um, they need their lead coefficient, the coefficient of the highest degree. They need that to be one. So they divided everything by three, and then they look through they look through all the numbers that they get after they've divided out the lead coefficient. They look through and they say, well, which one has the highest absolute value? Well, th I guess 13 thirds, because that's m that's bigger than all the other ones. So 13 thirds had the highest absolute value of all these coefficients, and then um, they added one. And so now they know that all the interesting parts of their um, quartic are gonna be within 16 thirds of the origin. Okay, that's that's what this is all about. So we're still going to use all our graphing tools and methods that we've learned before. Like we always like to find um, the zeros and put those down. We like to think about the shape. Is it a quartic? Is it a cubic? Is it a, you know, what shape is it? Is it going to be downward facing or upward facing? So we're still using all that, but now we're also um, using the region of interest. And I'm also, I'm just going to be honest with you. I never use the region of interest. I just go find the zeros and... Um, go ahead and graph it, but if the question is asking you for a region of interest, you need to uh, give the region of interest. So I'm going to go ahead and do 116, number 6. It says for the following polynomial functions, where am I? Um, determine the, radia the radius of the region of interest. So I have to because they told me. Then choose various x values within the region of interest and find the corresponding y values. So basically plot some points. Apply knowledge of the basic shape of the graph. So I hope that we know, we've talked a little bit about basic shapes of quartics, cubics, quintics, parabolas. Um, use the coordinates of the points found on the graph to sketch the graph. So I'm going to go x cubed minus 5x plus 1.
Okay, I'm supposed to graph this thing. So I know it's a cubic, so I already kind of know the shape and everything, but first I better find my region of, of interest. So the region of interest, you have to normalize the polynomial. Well, it's already normalized because my lead coefficient is 1. So then you find the coefficient that has the highest absolute value, that's my negative 5, and then you add 1 to it, to, to its absolute value. So in other words, I can go uh, radius equals absolute value of negative 5 plus 1. So that's 6. My region of interest is 6. So if I did want, I mean, I know when I'm drawing my graph, I know that all the interesting things about my cubic are going to happen 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in this area. So it kind of helps you with graphing. And it only actually only takes a second to do it. So it might actually save you some time and work. You know, because I might have thought my graph was going to look bigger, but then now I know it's just going to be like this. Now I'm supposed to graph this thing. So I don't have to pick any points that are higher than the absolute value of 6. So actually this is a really nice um, thing to know. I know that a cubic looks like this. I just know that because I have its shape memorized. So I know it's going to come somehow go like this. I don't. I would like to know the x and y intercepts. The y intercepts kind of easy, right? Because I can go like this. Um, let's see. The y intercept happens when x is zero, right? Well, when x is zero, y is one. So I think it's going to go through there. Okay. So let's see. So now we've got to find the rest of the zero. So it's a cubic. So I need to um, find some zeros. So since it's a cubic, I'll do some uh, synthetic division on it to find some zeros. So I like to always choose one or negative one. I'll just choose one. Try. I'm going to try to divide it. So um, this will be a one. Notice I don't have an x squared term, so I have to just choose zero for x squared. And then synthetic division. 1 times 1 is 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. That didn't work for me because I didn't get a 0 denominator. Oh yeah, I remember this problem now. Okay, so I can use, um, I'm going to try negative 1. And then I'm probably going to end up just plotting some points. Um, here's 1, 0, negative 5, 1. Because this doesn't take too long. Bring down the 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. So that didn't work out either for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to give up though. I'm just going to see the rational root theorem says that I have to have um, says that I have to have numbers that divide into one or factors of one over one. So I'm going to go ahead and just start plotting some points at this at this point. So I know that I only have to plot points. I don't have to plot anything bigger than than 6. So what happens when I plug 1 in here? Let's see what happens. So 1 cubed is 1. Should I, can I do this? 1 cubed is 1 minus 5 plus 1. So that would be negative 3. So 1 comma negative 3. And then let's try, I don't know, I guess we'll try 2. 2 cubed is 8. Uh, 5 times minus 10 plus 1. 8 minus 10, that's negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So 2 comma negative 1. Ah, see, I think I see what's going to happen. I think it's going to go down and come back up. Um, should I try three? 
I don't know. I guess I can try. Wait. I don't think. I think 3 is going to be some huge number. 3 cubed would be 27. I don't want 3. I think I'll try negative 1. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Negative, and then that's going to be plus 5 plus 1. That's 6 minus that's 5. Negative 1 comma 5. Huh. Okay, negative 1 comma 5. Negative 2 comma, or let's say negative 2. Negative 2, if I square negative, if I uh, cube negative 2, I'll get negative 8 plus 10 plus 1. So that'll give me, two, that'll give me 3. Negative 2 comma 3. Ah, uh, I see. So I think it's going to kind of, let's see, it's a cubic, so it's probably going to go something like that. I don't know if you can see that. Now, we don't know for sure that those are any turning points or anything. If I want to, I can make it a little bit nicer. Um, I don't know. Do I want to make it nicer? Not really. I think I'm. I think it's good. I'll, well, let's look in the answer book and see what it says for number six. One sixteen. Number six. Yep. Yeah, actually, our graph is pretty darn accurate as it is. So we're just gonna. So these are just. I mean, I could have plugged in some more numbers. Like, I don't want you to go off thinking that these are for sure the turning points, but we just know that in general these are points on the graph, and we know that the graph has this general shape. So it might be that maybe it went down a little bit more over here, but really it couldn't have gone down much more anyway. And maybe it went a little higher here, but I mean, how high is it going to go when it has to? It has to come back down to here. Okay, so that's that's a good enough sketch of a graph.